New candle alert. We got smoked honey. Sweet. What's up, everybody? It's your man, Pots and Pans. Welcome back to Real Chef Tips. Got another episode, um, knives, again. Last week, I told you to go out and get a good one. Just one, really. You only need one good one. Hopefully, you've used it a few times since then. If not, why are you even watching these episodes? Secondly, you've probably noticed that it's not as sharp as it once was when you took it out of the package. So today's episode is gonna be all about sharpening. Once again, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when new ones come out. I appreciate each and every one of you, so let's get into today's episode. Knife sharpening. Why? It is extremely important to make sure that your knives are sharp at all times. Working with a dull blade is really, really dangerous. When you think about it, when you're not effortlessly going through it because of a sharp blade, you have to alter the way that you're holding it. You know, it's not so nice and relaxed. You're putting more pressure into it. When you're putting more pressure into things, you're more likely to make mistakes and dig into uh, that skin suit of yours. And B, you get all these like little annoying things like blisters from pushing down so hard all the time. Plus, cooking's supposed to be fun. Every person I've ever gone to their house that wasn't a professional cook has the dullest blades on the planet. These are the exact same people that say, I hate cooking. It takes so much time. It's so hard. Well, all you have to do is keep a sharp knife and you won't have any of those problems. Now, how do you sharpen a knife? What do you need? You need this guy, right? You just take this thing and you just take your knife and you do this and you can do it as fast as you'd like, like your Gordon Ramsay, right? Wrong. This is a sharpening steel. This does not sharpen your knife, contrary to popular belief. All this does is realign the edge. It's used to just give your knife a little pep talk, you know? What you really need to sharpen your edge is this guy or one of these guys. This is a sharpening stone. Now there's many different varieties. There's Western versions of this that have like different grits on every side and you just kind of rotate it and they're big and bulky and you can use either water on them or oil, never both, because as we know, water and oil are arch nemesis. nemesis. Um, this is a Japanese version, a whetstone, spelled with one word and they throw an H in it, W-H-E-T, S-T-O-N-E. Does that piss me off? Absolutely. Wet is already a word and stone is already a word. We don't have to combine them and add an extra consonant. Consonant? If you're gonna do that, pronounce it the way it's spelled. Whetstone. Wet, wet, wet. All of these Japanese whetstones that you will see only use water. They are water stones. Shocker. This one is really great. Um, it costs about $80, it's made by King. You have two different coarsenesses here. Coarsenesses? Um, I'll provide a link below so that you can get this if you'd like. This is great for beginners, advanced people, sushi chefs, um, people that take their job way too seriously, or just really honestly at the end of the day, love to take care of their knives and have them razor sharp. They might have like three, five, 10 different coarsenesses, 10 different stones with varying degrees of coarseness is what I'm trying to say in way too many words. If you choose not to go with a combination stone and you wanna buy two separate ones, I would just make sure that you get one about a thousand, even up to 3,000, that's like medium coarseness and that's for general knives that just need sharpening. Anything above 3,000 is actually just for refinement. It is uh, what you would call a finishing stone and that's what we have here, 8,000. Um, I've seen people have 10,000, 15,000. Sushi guys have like 30,000. It's pretty much stupid at that point for an average home cook, nobody really needs it. That's why I recommend this combination stone because one click, next day delivery. Thanks, Bezos. Now that you know the different types of stones, I'm gonna teach you how to use this jaw, all right? First up, agua, Spanish for water. We're learning today. 
The first step is to soak your stone in water. And that takes about 15 minutes. As soon as you put it into the water, you'll see it start to be all bubbly. Whenever those bubbles begin to stop, that's when you know your stone is pretty much ready. Temperature your water should be lukewarm or what I like to call Mikey warm because my channel and also who the fuck is Luke? You know, if one time you use really cold water and then the next time you use really hot water, all these temperature fluctuations is just gonna increase the chance that you're gonna break your stone. If you keep it in water and you don't let it thoroughly dry, you'll start to see certain parts of it crack. At the end of the day, wear and tear is a thing. You can see here, or maybe you can't, that there's a little crack on it. You're just gonna have to buy a new one, 80 bucks, not a big deal. Side note, as you begin to watch this video, you're gonna notice that this isn't my current kitchen. I actually shot this video two months ago in my old apartment and I didn't feel like shooting it again. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Remember when that was a thing? Now, as you can see, I tend to just make the paper towel damp and then I place this stone on top of it and that prevents it from moving around. Um, my particular stone and most of them, you can get little platforms like this. Um, it never seemed to work for me. It's stupid. He's up. As always, do what works for you. Knife sharpening technique. There's kind of two major ways to do it. It all just comes down to personal preference. If you have a European or Western slash American style knife that's 50-50 in blade orientation, most people use a swooping motion, back and forth from the tip to the heel, nice and easy, and then they flip it over and they do it the same exact amount of times on the other side, and that works for some people. Now, while that works for many people, and that is certainly a Western technique, my knives are primarily of Japanese descent. Sort of. You know what I'm saying. This is a Japanese knife, and it's designed in a very particular way, and that just means you have to be even more particular about the way you sharpen it. So all of these knives have different blade symmetry. Sim 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 symmetri symmetrices. Now I talked about this a little bit in the last video. I mentioned that most Western knives are 50-50. I mentioned that my knife is 80-20. Now when I say this, all that means is that all knives, while they come to a point in a V shape, not all knives are designed the same way. And it comes down to just the symmetry. For that reason, I have to sharpen this in a very particular way both in the amount of time that I spend on each side because that's different, but also the degree that I hold the knife from the stone. You're looking for the knife's bevel. This video is gonna be a little bit longer and I don't want it to get too long-winded, so I'm not gonna explain all the different parts of the knife, but in reference to how I'm gonna actually sharpen this knife, I need to explain a little bit about the Shinogi line, which is where the blade starts to taper down. Then the whole strip here that's actually nice and shiny because this is super sharp, that's called the blade road. And then the very bottom, just where it comes to the tip, that's the bevel. And that's what you're trying to find. You're not trying to sharpen anything else. You don't want to scratch it up. Sharpening is a skill. It's tough. It's still like a skill that I'm honing, no pun intended, but it's something you'll get better at. So you just want to sharpen the bevel. Here's how. Now the way that I was taught to sharpen my knives is to use the back side first and then that actually aligns the blade and then when you switch to the front side of the knife, you actually get a really, really precise bevel. But honestly, it's not really that big of a deal when you consider an average knife that's 50-50 symmetry. You can start on either side, it's not that big of a concern. Now you might be asking yourself, hey chef, how do you know what's the front or the back? Most knives that you see are right-handed, but you can actually get a knife that's designed for lefties. And it's pretty simple. Whatever topography that you see, I think that's a real word. Is that what I was looking for? Judges? The writing, the emblems, the logos that companies put on it is always gonna be on the front of the knife, whether it's a lefty or righty knife. Next, how do you hold the knife when you're about to sharpen it? Now, in the process of watching other people sharpen their knives, I've realized that there's really no right, no wrong. Everybody seems to have their own style, what works for them best. The only important thing is that you remain safe and you're comfortable while doing it. Do I need to like get a lawyer for this or? Be very careful. Um, I've seen people, for instance, when they're sharpening the backside, they start with the knife this way and they only do everything with one hand. They put their thumb on the top of the spine and their pointer finger at the heel of the blade, which is the bottom here towards the back, and they drag it towards them. They put pressure on it and they drag it towards, and then they slide it forward and then they relieve the pressure and drag backwards. 
that doesn't work for me. I think it's really important to be comfortable with both sides. So when I'm sharpening the back of my blade, I use my left hand. I put my thumb at the bottom of the heel. I put my pointer finger on the spine, find the bevel, and I just go back and forth and back and forth. And then when I switch it and I do the front side to my blade, I just switch hands, but my finger placement is the same. My right thumb goes on the heel. My pointer finger goes back onto the spine. How do you find the bevel, you may ask? It's kind of hard. It's a little bit of tricky. Eventually, your knife will just become an extension of you, and you'll learn it. It's, it's all about feel. It's like a fisherman. He doesn't, you know, a, a seasoned fisherman is out there on the boat, and he's just one with nature, man, and he just knows where the fish are. It's exactly how it is with your knife, eventually. As I mentioned, you're only sharpening the bevel. Don't sharpen anything else but the actual bevel where the knife comes to a point. In order to do that, we're looking for about 10 to 15 degrees. Again, every knife is designed a little bit differently, but 10 to 15 degrees is generally what you're looking for. If you're good and you're like a human protractor, you might know what 10 to 15 degrees is like. An additional trick is actually by using pennies. If you have a Western 50-50 oriented knife, you can actually use three pennies. Throw them bad boys onto the stone, place the spine of the knife on top of them jongs, and that's about the angle that you're looking for. It would be the same on both sides. For Japanese knives like mine that are 70-30 or 80-20, you would probably be looking for more of three pennies on the back and two pennies on the front. Again, the angle has to be slightly different because that's how the blade was designed. Don't stress out about finding 10% or 15%. The most important thing is that every time that you do this, that you remain consistent. You're not gonna alter the blade by being off a few degrees. It's not gonna be that big of a deal, but if one time you sharpen it and you have it at about five degrees and then the next time it's about 20, that's when it's gonna be a nightmare and counterproductive. You'll ruin your blade a lot faster. Just do it with the same consistency every time, you'll be fine. As if finding the bevel isn't hard enough, finding the bevel at the tip of the knife can be even harder. What I found that works best for this is to keep the exact same hand positioning. All you have to do is raise your elbow slightly to find that bevel and then adjust accordingly as you move down towards the heel. Now that you found the bevel, the only other thing that you need to be successful and to get the best edge on your knife is to turn the knife in relationship to this stone to about 60, 70 degrees. That is the orientation that you are looking for. This knife needs to be an extension of your arm essentially. So you're holding it firmly, but you're also relaxed. If you're too tense, you're gonna slip and your fingers might slide and you're gonna cut your finger off or just bleed out badly on the floor of your apartment, maybe alone or maybe in front of a loved one. And Either way, that's a terrible situation. Now you got your knife in this hand, comfortable, firm, but relaxed. You take the other hand, two fingers preferably, and you work from the tip all the way down to the heel, and you're applying a little bit of pressure. Wherever you have the pressure, that's where your knife's being sharpened in that moment. For Western knives, they're a little bit more durable the way they're designed. You can get away with multiple strokes, you know, three, five, 10 in one area before you graduate all the way down. But for Japanese blades, I was always told that you should only spend about two or three strokes in one area because you can deteriorate a little bit of the blade and cause scratches that you don't want to. So work your way all the way down the blade and then come back to the top and you can start all over. It is very important that you're only putting pressure on the knife as it's moving forward. The reason I use this method is because I found it's far more difficult to control the knife on the way back. If you're still continuing to put pressure on it and you don't alleviate that pressure, you're far more likely to cut into the stone or even worse, cut into yourself. Whatever percentage your knife is, that's also a clue of how long you should be spending on each side. Again, 50-50 is equal on both sides, but the front side of the Japanese knives is what's referred to as the dominant side. So the back, when you're sharpening it, you're really only putting a small amount of pressure. Less pressure, you're just taking that bevel over, realigning the blade so that when you go back to that front side or dominant side, that's where most of the work is done. That's where you apply more pressure to it. As you can see here, I'm drying my knife off to check for the bevel. You don't always have to do this. And in fact, leaving that residue that you see on the stone, which is actually the metal from your knife coming off, that can actually help you get a better edge on your knife. And it's recommended to not remove it, but for a beginner, when you're looking for a bevel in between switching sides, it's actually a lot easier in my opinion. So you can clean your knife off. Don't clean the stone off. Keep all the residue on there. Now, 
It is of the utmost importance that you keep your stone wet. It is a wet stone. It does not work properly unless you keep applying water to it the entire time you're sharpening your blade. Once you're finished with that first side, you wanna take your thumb and you wanna push it along the edge of the blade. Never pull it towards you because you're gonna cut yourself. If you just got done sharpening the back of your knife and then you take your thumb and check for the burr, it's not gonna be there on that side. It's actually gonna feel nice and flush. If you flip it to the front side and you check your thumb again, what you'll feel is a little bit of a ridge. Your thumb's actually gonna get caught on a little bit of metal. That's the burr. That's what you're looking for. All you did was just push the edge of the blade to the other side. So now when you work on the dominant side, you're gonna realign the edge again. You're just gonna go back and forth a few different times doing this until your edge gets really sharp. The numerical symmetry of your knife will actually be a good indication of how long you should spend on each side. 20% on that back side, real nice, real soft and gentle just to flip over the burr, and then when you flip to the front side or dominant side, you're probably gonna spend about three, four times the amount of time on that dominant side before you switch back again. Additional tips. It's very, very important to be as consistent as possible. If you keep the same pressure, the same strokes, the same angle, you'll be fine. One tip that no one actually really told me, I just kind of picked up along the way and it works really well for me, is that the posture in which you keep your body in the position while you're going back and forth is just as important. This is, again, an extension of your hand. So everything's kind of locked in place. My shoulders, my hands, everything stays the same as I'm going back and forth. The only thing that's really happening is I'm bending at the elbow, but my rest of my body is locked in place. Now, how do you know your knife is sharp? Well, you could cut some food, but general rule of thumb is to actually take a sheet of piece of paper, sheet of piece of paper, and if your knife can do this, it's sharp. To do this test, just go from the heel all the way to the tip, and if you can do that at all, you got a sharp ass knife, my friend. You got a sharp ass knife, papa. Hey, if you're not good at this, that's fine. You're gonna suck. Everyone sucks at everything until you don't. Knife sharpening is not easy. I'm certainly not a master. There are certainly levels to this, but you're just gonna get better and better every time. So once you're done with this dawn on the stone, you reach for this guy. Now this guy is what you use to put the finishing touches on an already sharpened blade. The same angles that you used on the stone with the knife is gonna be used on here. This would be 90 degrees depending on how you're looking at it. If you go half of that, that's 45. Another half of that is 22 and a half. You can find that 10 to 15 degree mark. Um, a lot of people are comfortable just holding it like this. I'm gonna stop doing that because you probably can't hear shit. Uh, a lot of other people do it away from you. I was never good at that. I was never taught that way. So I don't do it. Um, this guard here is he here for a reason. So just keep your thumbs and your fingers behind it and just go slow. If you can't do anything slow, then you shouldn't be doing it fast anyway. If you're really, really uncomfortable, you can actually invert it, put this on a table, and then you can go towards the table. I tend to go from the heel to the tip in this kind of manner. Some people I've seen go tip to heel. Is that the dumbest thing I've ever heard? Yes. Whatever you're comfortable with, just go slow in the beginning, you'll get good at it, it's no big deal. Slow and steady, slow and steady. And then as you work up to it, you just get a little bit faster. You just get a little bit faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. I honestly can't really do it that fast and that's all for show. Mm. The slower that you do this, the more accurate you're gonna be. I tend to just keep it slow and steady. You don't have to do it that many times. You see these flashy chefs on TV, stupid. That's gonna be all for today's episode. I know this was a lot of information. I know that this is gonna be a hard skill to learn, so don't refrain from asking me questions. Drop a comment, send me a DM. I'll be more than happy to help you. What else do you guys wanna see? What videos, what skills, what recipes? And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe hit the notification bell. As we know, I don't like outros. I think they're stupid. I don't know what to say. So I'll just say thank you. Love and peace. My gnocchis. Chef out.